what's going on UBA? This is the voice of choice, Sean Dye Faison, and we're here at Linden Lanes in Linden, New Jersey. And we're about to witness a contest, best of seven, for the UBA Northeast Heavyweight Championship. I'm standing with here, challenger, Mr. Dingle himself, Jonathan Dansbury of All In, right here. Very All good. In, to my right, we got the champion himself. Defeated Keith Perry for it. He took over and now representing the takeover as the Northeast Heavyweight Champion, Mike Potoski himself, AKA Like Me. Or Like Me, depends if he likes you or not. <laughs> All right, so speaking to the champ first, how do you feel coming into Linden? I feel good, nursing some injuries, but I'm medicated, I'm ready to go. There you go, all right. Full of pills and full of thrills, I like that. All right, so speaking of thrills, I know you're thrilled that you were able to come back from a 1-3 a, a deficit against Nick Kendis. All right, can you tell us a little bit about that and let's see if you have some of that fight today. It just had to put my nose to the grind and get the job done, you know? You get backed against the wall, you just gotta go for it. He went 269, I was able to survive that game, and then I was able to get the next two, so it worked out for me. Certainly had your walking shoes down, because you know, you, you walk them down. It's gotta hurt. All right, well, best of luck to you today. And talking to the challenger himself, Mr. All In, right here, former, ta former tag team champ. I think you held it how many, two times? Two times. And how do you feel about today's contest you know you you went through a couple people to get here um you actually um had a very big victory against a smurf yes joe heim himself and um tell us about that match um um well westbrook his home house um last time we actually had a match bold bristol uh, our team's home house um fun fact i stink there so you know i try not to bowl at bristol but um uh, we go to Westbrook. I had to look. He didn't. Um, four one. You ate him up. Pretty much ate him up. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So you ate up the Smurf. I, 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 that's how you want to put it. I guess so. I, Gargamel. All I, I, I know is I'm here. I'm ready for belt. Uh, I'm 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 tired of being told. You know, I haven't I haven't never held a singles title for as long as I've been on this damn list. So uh, I'm here. It's it's my time now. So, so my time. So you're all in. Look forward to potentially seeing you at Battle Bowl with the strap, you know, and um, let's see if Dingle going to do his thing. All right? Thank you. Ding, ding. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, this is the voice of choice, Sean I face, and we want to thank all the viewers here on this lovely Saturday. We are here, right here in the corner. They put baby in the corner, but that's all right. We're not going to kick and scream. We're just going to kick pins out, hopefully kick out a whole bunch of tens. We are witnessing best of seven. WCS, World Championship Series, Northeast Heavyweight Championship, current champion Mike Potoski defeating Nick Kendis. Coming back, mm -hmm. coming back from a 1-3 deficit to the successfully defend this title. And we have Jonathan Dansbury. Hunter, whoever wants to put a wager up, put a post up, put a text up, sell me. Poppy Chulo in the building. Oh, Poppy. All right, owner of DTO. All right. Let's go. Got $100. Anybody want to take it back? Oh. It's a good time to take it. Well, <laughs> the odds definitely are not in his favor on the first frame. As we start with a classic Josh Malik. Josh Malik, 810. Right there. A little, a little appearance by Josh, <laughs> a.k.a. The 810 left on lane 23, and not a good start. Probably went with something that was going to go long, hoping that it'll hook, and it deflected and did not create that ripple effect that you're looking for when you're trying to carry a good shot. The line was fine, but the result was not. And shot goes up. And area check as well as pin count. So eight and one, nine to start the first frame for the champion, Mike Potoski. And I know right now, instead of like me, he's telling the pins to lick me. And up on lane 24, we got Jonathan Dansbury. 
again saying he is hungry for his first singles title here in the Northeast WCS. And he likes it, and that's why. All right. Got a strike to start off. Way to jump all over. He's all in, and he was all over that first frame debacle by the current champion. He likes his look, and let's see if he can retain his look and stay focused. It seems that Dansbury is going with something dull, something strong, and something to really cover any potential any potential carry down that may be created from Mike. Mike went with something weak, it deflected, and you saw the result he got. Very good. Release. And ah, you might have caught some of that oil that Mike caught earlier on that lane. Those who've played at Linden before know that for the most part the oil it stays it stays it stays good through throughout the entire match. It takes a while for this place to break down. And Dansbury with the release, and he converts his spare. So potential 280 max for Dansbury. All in looking to make up for, for a loss and a bump from the playoffs courtesy of International Flavors who will be moving forward to the Elite Eight at Battle Bowl. Again, Battle Bowl will be taking place August 9th through August 13th. Yes, August, August 9th through August 13th. And hopefully one of these individuals be walking in as champion and great adjustment, slight angle change does not change the surface, changes the angle. So right now, potential 278 max for the champion, Mike Patelski. The winner of this match will have to defend against the new number one contender, Sean Hack. Sean Hack recently sweeping Josh Valdez. Recently sweeping Josh Valdez in Carolier lanes. And that right there was a great shot. Great shot by Mike Patoski. I'm sure Josh will bounce back from the sweep. Doesn't happen often. And Dansbury is showing you his pin chaser skills. And he, oh, takes out the dead wood and the live wood. I'm pretty sure Sean will be watching this match intently, maybe doing a little scouting, <laughs> doing a little scouting, seeing what he can do, seeing who his potential opponent may be. Sean Hack looking to acquire the heavyweight title himself. Again, sweeping Josh Valdez in Carolier lanes just yesterday. And Dansbury up. Very good. So right there we have strike, spare, strike still staying on that 280 pace. Now let's see if there's any adjustment that Jonathan and Mr. Dansbury is going to make on lane 23. Caught a little oil, avoided a washout. Let's see if he's going to maybe move his feet or maybe look outside early for earlier reaction. On the approach. Just as I suspected. So as you can see, there's a slight difference between both lanes. One reading slightly early, one reading a little late. And we have a 2-4-5 leave for Dansbury. Again, he's on a strike with a spare doesn't lose any count, but that 80 turns to 60. That's very up. 
Reads a little early and gets over, and he converts to two, four, five. So now things that may be going through Dansbury ahead may be a change with the feet or change with the surface. Mike is staying the course, and he's going to stick with what he feels will bring him to the dance. And the dance and the dance partner will be that heavyweight championship strap that he carries oh so proud. Mike up. Oh, and gets a, gets a lot of revs, but not exactly the same speed that he had on the other one before. Great release, great reaction. Unfortunately, not the result he wanted, but no split, hopefully no trouble. 3-6-10 leave. Let's see if we can convert it. And he keeps the rule of kiss. He keeps it simple, silly, with a good decision to switch to his plastic. No chance for the lanes to decide whether or not he converts the spear. He made the decision himself. I know that I know the takeover with love from Mike to walk in the battle bowl as champion representing. I know they haven't really seen the playoffs in a while. And Anyone else looking to view playoffs, playoff situations and playoff standings can definitely go to the UBA website. I know All In, <laughs> they definitely had a good run, and I'm sure that they'll have plenty of runs in the playoffs going into the future. It would definitely be good to see the man join to me on my left. going to work here. Uh-oh. He said, oh. Dansbury said he might have a little trick up a sleeve. Mike converts his spare right there, so Mike has a good look. I trust his look. Let's, let's see if Dansbury trusts his look. He says he wants to try something a little different, and let's see what we got here. Up on lane 24. Dansbury up. And again, 24 has been very good. And it looks like Dansbury going potential Dutch. 23 is not giving it up. 24 is just laying on the floor. Dansbury up on lane 23, still trying to figure that lane out. And let's see if he solved the equation. And oh, it looks like we have a little problem solving on lane 23. So now, instead of going steady with lane 24, he has lane 23 on the side as well. Very good. 23 being a good side chick for him. <laughs> so right now, right now he has two. One was fun, but now two is true. Speaking of true, let's see if we got a true, oh yes, a true shot, nothing truer. He gets all through that. Lane 24 right now is being abused by both bowlers. 23 is a little more defiant. 23 playing hard to get. It's amazing watching this match, and you see the contrast of surfaces being used, which speaks to the to the game style of both both individuals. And see, ah, he searches for a little deeper angle. He gets outside very early and gets a early read. And right now, he's looking to convert the 4-10. That is not, not what Mike was looking for. Mike really trying to get momentum, try to get a rhythm going. Great spare attempt. Slides the four over, but doesn't doesn't cut it sharp enough. So that is the second open in the contest right now for Mike. 
Mike said he's medicated and he's ready to go, but right now <laughs> he needs to he needs to take a chill pill <laughs> and find something. And he waves goodbye to that because right now he's trying to kick the bucket and he left the bucket up there. Well, good thing it was only a bucket of chicken and no biscuit or drink on the side because he, that would be a big order, to, big order to pick up. But he ain't trying to pick up any kind of big orders today. So definitely losing some wood. Double and six. And let's see if we can pick that up. And nope, he does not give that frame back. So right now, Dansbury focused on staying the course. You always want to set set the pace with getting the first the first win in a best of seven. Being a former champion, I understand the importance of staying the course and sending a message with that first game. That first game is important. Now you can handle being down 0-1. Once you start getting down 0-2, that's when you start getting in your own head. And right now, Mike, I know he's a, he's a champion and I'm pretty sure he's gonna stay focused. It's a, it is a marathon, not a sprint. But right now, it looks like Dansbury is trying to sprint to the finish line of the first game. Dansbury feeling very comfortable, getting to his groove, looking comfortable with each shot. Potential 226 finish for, for Dansbury. Let's see if Mr. Like Me likes this shot. I like the shot from back here. And look at that. And it looked great from back here. 24 has not been the issue. 23, ironically, which is an odd number, has been acting odd for both participants in this match. Still trying to get a read is Mike. Mike Patelski right now may want to use the rest of this game and maybe search for something different search from different angles or maintain the same line two different surfaces let's see all right a double a, hey good old double if he can go out the door and if maybe we could have a hiccup or a sneeze somewhere mike could sneak out game one The pressure is not in game one. It's all about getting some pace for game two, three, and four. And that gets out a little early. And it does not take the 10 out. All right, this will, be, this will be the first 10 pin that we're watching Dansbury shoot. Let's see if he's loose enough. And Dansbury releases and all over that 10 pin. So the, little, the tap dance doesn't bother him for the moment. Dansbury remaining clean. He is keeping the house clean to make room potentially to move in some some new hardware some furniture that being the heavyweight championship of the northeast you need this one right here he don't get this one man gonna come back home hey you know what hey anything could happen anything could happen. we've seen right. walk downs happen let's shoot a name dingle. And, and and well let's say if dingle oh dingle oh oh you, you must have made dingle's ears tingle he must have heard <laughs> you i think you made dingle's ears tingle that's right and it's safe to say that Dansbury buried that shot. Hopefully to solidify a spot atop the mountain of the heavyweight division of the Northeast. Potential 216 finish for Jonathan Dansbury. He needs this to lock Mike out. And let's see if he's going to put the master lock on it and Oh, all right. 
doesn't count. It didn't, this house doesn't count that correctly, right? That's still oh, no, no. early 86 there, or no? Oh, no, no, yeah, that's, see, that's the top, right? Yeah, it's 186, so 206 potential finish with the spare conversion. That last shot just finished slightly behind the head pin, missed inside a little early, skidded in the oil, and ended up leaving a 10 pin. Spare conversion gives him 206, and he still makes, Mike, Mike still needs it all. Mike still needs all of it. Situation here, Mike with a potential 213 finish. While we're waiting for a ball return here, we want to thank all of you guys for watching. And we are preparing for Battle Bowl. This is the road to Battle Bowl. For those watching later on, we will have an amazing matchup, a loud matchup in the Jersey area. It will be the Garden Foundation versus Murder, Inc., the current reigning defending champions of the Underground Bowling Association. That's definitely a match you want to check out. That'll be streaming at 1 p.m. later on today at, oh, I'm sorry, 1 p.m. tomorrow at Bolero, North Brunswick, formerly known as Carolier, and the former home of Battle Bowl. Many great memories created in that building. Again, that'll be 1 p.m. tomorrow. Money Sunday. Speaking of money, this 10th frame will be money for game one if Mike can double. If he doubles, that definitely spells trouble for Dansbury. And that could do a lot to your psyche, especially being up all match, not having any opens, and then a flurry of strikes in the end to then take it from you, all because of a tap. Mike needs the first one. And, whoa, did not need that. And the area code is 710, the 710. So the gap to smile will definitely last a while in, in Mike's head. And uses that shot for a potential area check for next for next game. Nothing wrong with the shot off the hand, but again, like I said, once it's out your hand, it's out of your hands. And Dansbury takes game one, very good, and can wipe a little sweat off his brow for now. Hopefully, he can stay the course, and hopefully ride that ride that horse to victory. And victory will give him his first singles title in the. Northeast World Championship Series of the UBA. Game one, 206 for Jonathan Dansbury and 177 for Mike Potoski. Let's see if Dansbury could grab that momentum that he had. And does he still have the momentum? And I right, rise a little higher, leaving the 3 6 10. Spare here. Still gives him a potential 290 max. I know Mike right now has got to be a little upset with that 7 10 in the 10th, especially when he really needed it. All right. Dansbury, very good. Takes his time, converts to spare. No problem. Dansbury getting to this point by defeating Joe Heim, Joseph Heim from Smurf Nation. 4-1 in Westbrook. And Mike retaining his title against Mr. Kindis himself 
And that's, and that's why he came back. <laughs> he came back because he has heart. Coming back from a 1-3 deficit against Nick Kendis. And right now he is fighting to definitely come back and definitely do something that he wants to do and that is retain his championship. And a beautiful shot, a beautiful shot. So right now, starting off with a double, and right now he is throwing every single shot with a purpose. I know he has got to be fuming after that 7-10 leave. So right now he's trying to go and march forward, and he's trying to do like his jersey and take over games two, three, four, and five. Let's see if Dansbury will be the defender for that, and let's see if he'll try to stop that. Dansbury up. Ooh, and Dansbury flushing out that seven, that, that seven pin try to stay. And Dansbury up. And let's see if Dansbury can respond. And ooh, he's burying that. So he decided to take a little surface change himself. So getting ahead of the transition, one of the most important things, especially when you're having a one-on-one -on -one contest, having a good option for different surfaces, seeing what you like, sticking with something that you like, going with something predictable that you can manipulate, especially when the lane starts to transition. Dansbury likes to stroke it up the boards. Mike, as you see, if you watch his release, especially on the backswing, gains a lot of power, a lot of momentum, fights and can fight through the oil very well. And right there, that's a, 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 a big, a far cry from his first game. And he seems to be getting a lot more comfortable. Everything is starting to flow. Similar to a boxing match, sometimes you take a couple of jabs to respond with a couple of haymakers, and that is, and that is exactly what you're seeing right now. Responding as a champion should. The feeling out process is over, and now it's time to get off to the races. And right now, we're going to see if that ball's going to race to the pocket, and it certainly does. And he's looking to give himself a self-stretchy. He's trying to go 170. And maybe the 270 are better. <laughs> Potential 290 max for Jonathan Dansbury. Potential 300 max for Mike Potoski of the takeover. And let's see if Dansbury's ball is going to be all in. Gets out early. And seven pin with a little bit of fat Joe Axon as it leans back. So right now, despite the first shot, Dansbury definitely seeing what was happening, did not wait to make a decision. I know sometimes as bowlers, we get a little stubborn. We'll maybe wait three or four frames to do what we know we should do. And it'll nag us, and we'll usually throw a screw it shot with the ball that, or the line that we know we should have did before. I'm glad he made that decision early. Lane 23, likes it, and Dansbury staying the course. So a vast, a vast improvement, a great improvement from both individuals first game. So right now, Dansbury fighting, fighting from his back a little bit, but the same could be say, said about Mike. Mike definitely got knocked down in the first round. So he's getting up and he's, and he's throwing punches. He's throwing a lot of punches and they're landing. 
And let's see if this punch lands. And oh, it does not. So like I said, creates a lot of revs, great shot, great rev rate. But once you miss inside a little bit, you start catching some oil. And once you get a little skid, that's exactly what could happen. And you have to be careful with this spear because it's very easy to chop this spear right here. And no problem, no chopsticks there. So a little hiccup now um, gives Dansbury the advantage. So now we go from Mike with a potential 300 max to a now potential 278 max versus Dansbury's potential 290 max. Despite that one shot, he has been spot on and his rhythm has been great. And he wants to retain that rhythm if he wants to potentially take this second, this second game. All right, that ball takes a while to get around the corner, but it still carries, and it mixes everything up, channeling his inner DJ. And we got a little dead wood on lane 23. Lane 23 in, in need of a blue chew because there's a little dead wood on there. Dansbury taking his time, seeing the shot, getting settled in it. And gets out a little early. Let's see what happens. Oh. Early read is what he needs, and he gets right through the pocket, and he is liking every single shot off his hand right now. And he is staying the course. He is staying the course for that potential 290 max. While we have this time, again, thanking you in advance for Sunday, 1 p.m., all the viewers that will be watching Murder, Inc. against DGF. Hopefully, all of you will be all in. And speaking of all in, Jonathan Dansbury representing All In. He is all in the mode and he's all in his focus. Dansbury up. Dansbury still all in. And he's walking. He's talking and he likes every shot off of his hand. And he's showing you exactly why he is the number one contender and could potentially be the future, the future heavyweight champion. Mike likes it off his hand too. And he's still mixing it up right now, getting real mixy. And Mike says he's still here. He is still here. Now Mike did lose game one, so he's down 0-1. And a lot of times, like I said, we... <laughs> like I said, there's nothing wrong with being down one game because using that as a filling out process, not only for your opponent, but for yourself as well. But he has to send a statement that he is still here with each shot. So right now, Mike, Mike fighting. He's fighting from the bottom right now, and he's got to fight with every single shot. He came out swinging, but guess what? Dansbury, he took a couple of punches, and now right now he's getting more power with every punch he throws. Dansbury up on lane 24. Every shot Dansbury has been getting out early, getting a good early read. That one he misses inside a little bit, but it doesn't matter because he still got up under it. And, he's, and he is staying on every shot. Every shot has been all in. He lives what he wears.
Dansbury is not getting buried by the moment. Matter of fact, he is swimming in his moment and he is reveling in every single shot as he should. And like this I said, laser focus right now. He's mm -hmm. coming up high though, man. I'm waiting for that split. Well, I don't know. Every single time you say know. something, you make Dingle's I ears know, but tingle. You know what? I haven't been saying that. He's still been striking. Maybe this talk will help. Let's see. Let, let's see if Poppy. Oh, and Poppy is wrong. Really? Man, who does he pray to? Jose Cuervo? Sorry, so, so, sorry, Poppy. That's it, Poppy. That's it. That's it. That's it. Oh, you know, and you know what? Yeah, 290 to 278 max. Yup, yup. And then he needs, he needs the first hit in the 10th, right? Yes, and this was the same situation before. Already down, uh, one up, right? Yeah, right now um, Mike is down. Um, he's got an 0 1 deficit. And he two. likes deficits. Oh, why. yes. It's the Navy, it's the Navy seal. <laughs> and does not trip it. And again, he's catching a, he's catching a lot of carry down. So that's the, that's the problem with going with predictable surfaces. It, it gives you it gives you permission to hit it as much as you want, but if you miss inside, you get that skid, and you don't get the flip. Yeah, we're, we're waiting for Dingles of breakfast to kick in. She should be getting tired soon. Don't worry about it. Well, the one the one thing is not tired. <laughs> one thing is not tired right now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I know Mike needs to get tired of fighting from the bottom. Yes. He keeps having to have to come back from the bottom all the time. Yep. He's going to want me away from you, too, in a minute. And buries it right there. So potential 257 max. Now, again, that is. This guy splits. Yeah, oh, yeah, trust me. Anything can happen because it went from being 300, potentially to 290, to being 290, potentially to 270. Yep. So. It's all about that first shot in the tenth. You ain't lying. And what? He gets a nine count. He still, wait, he still wins. The nine count gets him 250 or something. Mm -hmm. 69. Mm-hmm. And send a message. Is he still here? And he is not still here. And that is, and that has got to be. <laughs> I know that's certainly got to be demoralizing for Mike. Yes, it has to be a seven count split. No. And that's the second time I've seen him go to that ball for his last shot in the tenth frame, and he may be fighting with himself to stick with that all through the game. I know he's tr trying to go with something that he can trust, something that's predictable, but let's see if. Let's see if he makes that decision. That's all important decision making. And right now, Poppy over here trying to see if he can put a little, put a little, put a little something on his. Oh, does, trying to put something on the shot. And oh, does not. Uh, I guess Poppy's fingers didn't work, but Dan, but, but Dansbury's did. <laughs> Very good game by Mike Potowski. 247, but it will not be enough. Game two, Dansbury looking to finish out for 290. Dansbury messing with another surface just to see what it does. And right now, he can do no wrong. His bag, his bag is what it is. And his bag is in his bag. Now, I'm not going to jinx it, but I believe that's a 290 max. See, there you go. Take that. I am not the new Gordon Pepper. I, I, I don't jinx things. Very good. Great 290 game. 206, 290 thus far. And 177 to 247. Both players jump. Mike needed to jump just a little more. So now we have a... 
0-2 deficit for the champion and a 2-0 lead for the challenger. Dansbury said he is tired of being told that he does not have a singles title underneath his belt. Well, today he's trying to change all of that. And he's two games away, potentially two games away from making that into a reality. The reality for Mike is that he needs to get on the ball. Mike finally trying something different. And I think he's going to kick himself a little bit the same way he kicked out the 10 because that may have been the ball that he needed all along. Despite the... Despite the uh, couple ball changes that Dansbury made on his fill shots, I think he's going to do the wise thing and stick with what brought him to the dance. You know what they say when you're cooking and if it tastes good, don't change the recipe. Let's see if the recipe still remains the same. Uh, and he's still cooking in the pot. Mix it up a little bit and keep it hot. And right now he's staying hot. And he's staying all in all in the mix for potentially his very first singles championship. And no rest for the weary because whoever wins will have to defend against Sean Hack. Sean Hack was waiting right now in the background just lurking. Who's that peeping in their window? Sean Hack. And let's see if he can hack it up. And he's hacking up Pence himself. Hacking and whacking. And Dingle right now, Dansbury is burying every shot. As I, as I may mention of before, Mike was messing with that ball every single last shot. But now he has to get into the mode of trusting it. Maybe some footing issues there. Probably didn't like the way he was sliding. You know, but we know how it is. If you're a bowler bowling in the summer, those approaches can get you. And I believe we have a, yes, we have a Viagra spare, a double wood to be exact, yes. Shout out to shout out to all champ shout out to all champions, especially the welterweight champion Julio Sicario Hernandez himself representing Tribe Baby Tribe. I know he's ready for his title defense a little later on. And yes, it's good to take notes. 247 in the ball change. Sometimes it's what you need, especially when it's not working out. If you're short with 247, that right there, that's got that's got to piss you off a little bit. Ooh, speaking of being pissed off. I have a I got a song on my mind. Searching and searching. And he's still and he's still searching. He's searching for that that comfort zone. He cannot get comfortable. And whoa. Ain't nothing but a spare right there. It's taking out the three, six, seven, ten. Made like a true champion. And even though the spare is big, he is going to need Dansbury to help him out a little bit. And I don't think Dansbury right now is, is, is in the mood for any form of philanthropy today. Dansbury still feeling good, willing to deal. And Dansbury right now, just every shot, he looks light. You would have thought he had wings. He looks like he's about to float every shot. If he keeps striking like this, we're going to have to have him pee in a cup real quick. <laughs> well, the only thing that's enhancing is the score. No enhancements needed. Oh. 
in an extremely forgiving leave. <laughs> well, and that was Dansbury's version of the crane. <laughs> but he stayed behind the foul line and he got out of a potential washout. And two pin converted. So let's see if there's any kind of adjustment that Mike can make. Mike needs to go on a run here and he's going to get inside of Dansbury's head. And he goes back to his original surface. So on the last frame, he got he got the ball out a little early. It read extremely early. It went high, and he's right now he's fighting with himself on whether or not to trust that surface, even though it gives him the reaction he wants. He has to be on top of every single thing that he does in terms of his release, his release point, his mark, his angle, his target. Too many things. I think he'd rather just keep it simple and, and gamble with that. And nothing wrong with the shot. Threw it like it was 10, but obviously not uh, 9. <laughs> 9 says otherwise. And 9 was solid as a rock as it leaves the stone 9 pin. One of the most frustrating leaves. Quote, unquote, the honest leave. If you're leaving a 4 pin or a 9 pin, it is an honest leave. And the pin and the pin's basically not not agreeing with anything that, that Mike is doing at the moment. Now Dansbury got away with, with a slight hiccup before. Let's see if he took a little anti antacid and let's see if he, he cleared up that problem that he was having before. And let's see if he could digest the strike right here. And oh and Dingle right now a little, with, a little, with a little tickle, a slight tickle, and everything just falls. Nobody wishes ill of anybody, but when you're down and your opponent starts to carry things that you don't think he should carry, let's, say, let's just say we start breathing a little different. That is a good question. We are definitely going to ask him what he's throwing. Dansbury up. Oh, wait a minute. And... <laughs> Dansbury going a little, a little Wiz Khalifa high there, uh, a little high grade shot, but not a high, not not a high grade result, leaving the six ten. And he opts not to chop, and converts his spare. So, range of emotions right now for the, for the current champion. You're down 0-2. You seem, you seem to be making every adjustment that you think is correct. You're either making one slight mistake or you're not getting the carry. You can either think about everything or you could just throw it better. As I say, always say, throw it better. And looks like he's going to throw it better here. And he does throw it better, but the 10 pin does not fall. And the corner pin civil rights movement is still strong. These corner pins stand up and they fight for their rights. And I, there's, not, there's nothing you can say about it. The, on, the only adjustments that you could truly make. Honestly, you can chance getting a split and try to get deeper in 
or you could just keep throwing it, hope that you carry, and hope that the opponent makes a mistake. All right. And he gets a mix. Right now, it seems like the mix is the best is the best result. Because the shots that Mike has been burying has not been doing him justice. But Mike's staying on top of his spares, keeping the house clean just in case. Just in case he has company. Right now, cleanliness is next to godliness because both individuals in game three have been keeping the house extremely clean, tidy, spotless. Did I speak too soon or no? Nope, did not speak too soon. Two pin lead for, for Jonathan Dansbury and pats himself on the chest because he realized that was him. He got a little fast with his feet, came up a little, a little fast as well. Didn't really let that shot flow. And release and all over that spear. Very similar to game one. Dansbury starts off hot, house of fire. Then he starts tapping, he starts leaving. If Mike can start, start striking while Jonathan starts tapping, then we could have a walk down situation, which would definitely be you know, a great morale booster for the champion. Dansbury releases and much better shot gets the result he was looking for and searching for. So now let's see if Mike, let's see if Mike can get the result that he's looking for. And let's see if he can start pushing 10 back on every on every rack. Mike knows he needs every shot. Mike gets it out and and the five pin tried to try to do something a little nasty, but no, no, no. And that's a double. And an important double. He needs to start stringing them and he needs to string them for the rest of the for the rest of the game. Mike trying to weather this storm. And it is getting, and it is storming. Right? Dansbury was raining a lot of strikes on him in the last game. Here he's still making it rain, but he's drizzling with certain spares. Mike right now needs to, needs to push back, he needs to fight back, and he needs to carry this one to send a message. And again, 23 is not in agreement with Mike. And right now, Mike, Mike is frustrated. You can tell with his body language. He has no idea what to do on lane 23. Lane 23 is giving him different reactions, a lot of mixed signals. All right, and Mike converts to spare. Mike looking at a potential 213 max. Now, Dansbury is in the driver's seat. He's in the driver's seat. But he needs to keep his foot on the gas and not take any, fr any frame for granted. Exactly <laughs> one of the reasons why Dansbury could be walking out here a little heavier with the in the and that weight is in the form of the heavyweight championship. 
And right now the storm rages on. And speaking of storm, um, later on, welterweight championship contest, best of seven. Current champion Julio Hernandez versus Anthony Morales of the South Jersey Storm. Also taking place here at Linden Lanes in Linden, New Jersey. And if Dansbury carries another shot like he just carried, that will not be a like me on his jersey. That will be lick me. And I think he's saying lick me. And with that shot, it is now 3-0 Dingle. So it is a, it's an interesting situation here. This could be potential sweep or potential walk down, but the way he's throwing the ball, the way Dingle is going, coming through every single shot, Dingle is walking it out and he's trying to walk out with the heavyweight championship. Dansbury with a little, a little room to play with another piece. Maybe see if that may be a transitional piece. I honestly don't think he needs a piece right now for the transition. I wouldn't even look for another piece right now. And I, and, and I think it's safe to say that I don't think he'll be picking that piece up anytime soon. Dansbury throwing the ball extremely well for the most part. 206 game one, 290 game two, 246 now. And Mike with a pretty much a, an, an effort shot. We, a lot of times, screw it is the best way to do it. Well, after this, game four is, well, there's, there's no other way to put it. It's a win or go home situation right now. There is no more breathing room. There is no more window. In this carry contest, the champion has not been carrying. And Dansbury could be carrying out his championship. And the look on the look on Mike Potowski's face says it all. Right now, very frustrated thinking what I have to do to walk out of here still being champion. Dansbury, very relaxed. Found himself the best working ceiling fan in all of Linden Lanes. <laughs> and he's trying to stay cool. And he has to stay cool, calm, and collected so that way he can potentially walk out here with his very first singles championship, that being the heavyweight championship of the Northeast. And we are good to go for game four. I know his partner, Troy Gafkin, very well. He's sitting here, and I know he'll be extremely proud to be joined by Dansbury at, on the list of people to have hold, to, 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 I'm sorry, to have held singles championships, him being a former Cruiserweight champion himself. This right here is the heavyweight division, and we are looking at a contest that shows that all you have to do is have heart and make sure that you are all in. And speaking of all in, if you want to get all in the World Championship Series, definitely feel free, feel free to join. There are opportunities always at any tour stop. And, at, and during Battle Bowl, there'll be opportunities to join as well. Shout out to Dr. Segura Wheeler for all that she does with the WCS. And she tries to make it a lot less stressful for any and every participant. 
participant that's in there. Always responsive and willing to answer any questions that you may have. Again, Dr. Segura Wheeler, thank you for all that you do in the World Championship Series. You are acknowledged and appreciated. I know one thing that Mike did not appreciate or does not appreciate. He does not appreciate <laughs> not being able to carry all of those shots that he feels that he is burying. Dansbury seems like he is free rolling. He feels as free as a bird and as light as a feather. And he's looking to spread his wings and fly his way across the finish line and into the, to the beautiful nest atop the tree and atop the mountain of the heavyweight division. And Mike gets it out. And it seems that Mike is losing, losing the win in the sales. The one, the one thing it's important not to do, you never want to seem defeated. And it's easier said than done. I've been on the lanes before. I know how it feels to lose and, and be down 3-0. And you, and you got you to gotta keep your heart in it. You got to keep your head up. In my Andy Grammer voice, you have to keep your head up because you never know. There could always be a window. And here's the funny thing about those situations. All it takes in this situation is to win one game to kind of wake you up. All it takes is that one shot to kind of make your eyes open a little wide and a little bright. Being down 0-3, when you're back into a corner, you're either going to crouch down and take the hits or you're going to start swinging and start fighting back. Ooh, speaking of fighting back, the 10-pin fights back. 10-pin practicing civil rights again. A little Marley-esque as it stands up for its rights. And no breathing room being given by Dingle. JDD, Jonathan Dingle Dansbury. You know, many people say things about the spinner carry of Jonathan Dansbury, I say it's accuracy and precision that gets him every single shot. And it gets him to the dance. And his style allows him to adjust right when many others have to adjust left. Sometimes down and in is the way to win. And this could be the last ditch effort for Mike. Mike going to the bag. Let's see if he found something that he likes. And Mike just not getting the reaction that he wants. And I think Mike may have given up with trying to manipulate the, out, the outside part of the lanes. All right, and Mike converts to spare. But right, right now, he's going to have to go all the way out the door. He walked in with many pieces and has yet to find the piece that he likes. Dansbury has walked in with a game plan, and he is sticking with that game plan. He's going strong, he's going dull, and he is working the outsides. Right, 
and gets a little mix of his own. Back nine could be could be fine if Mike can do it. But Mike is going to need to do that. Mike is going to he's he needs to go back nine to have a just at least a shot of not only winning game four, but not being thrown out the door because this right there, if this game if this is, goes in Dansbury's way, and if it goes Dansbury's way the way he wants it to go, it will be a sweep. And three, three off the rack. And it's moments like that that we talked about. You have to jump on somebody when you have them down 3-0 because any little glimmer of hope that they see, the transformation sometimes it is, is, is werewolf-esque. You release the beast whenever you show them they have a little chance and you do not want the beast to come out. Like I said, you give someone some daylight, they're going to start digging until they get out that little dark place. And Mike is in a dark place right now. He's in a very dark place. That three count right now, the only saving grace for the three count is that it's on a strike. So this could still be nine spare, essentially. And it's still nine spare. And you and, and you hear you hear Dansbury saying it. Still nine spare. It certainly would not be nine if he doesn't now. I'm pretty sure all the viewers were wondering what the hell happened on that last shot. <laughs> Damn three counts, boy. Get you every time. That's going to be a lot more than three. That's a lot more than three. Very good. Nope. And Dansbury with a lot more than three on that last shot. And speaking of three, he is up 3-0. And the man who was down 0-3 still cannot kick out the 10. He cannot kick the corners out. Mike may potentially be thinking about what he's going to pick up on the way. It's either going to be a burger or a beer. If he gets the if he gets a beer, ain't no need for the burger because right now there's plenty of beef that he has with the corner pins. And Mike, oh, finally gets a little bit of forgiveness from the seven and the ten that tried to stand up on him. And Mike not trying to lay down, but no, I didn't say anything. That's all I can say, but dot, 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 dot. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything else. I'm not going to disrespect the champion, but dot, 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 dot. And Dansbury all over itself. Maybe that three count was a good thing to keep him aggressive. So
So we are back on the road to Battle Bowl, and it looks like Dansbury is still in the driver's seat, and his foot is still on the gas, and he's avoiding speed bumps. He releases, he likes it, and that is why. He is just... He has just been stroking every single shot. He has been kind to the pocket. And the, they go, hey, 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 3D? Was that shot in 3D? <laughs> that shot was in 3D. <laughs> yes. Well, it is certainly raining right now on the parade of the soon-to-be, potentially former heavyweight champion. You know, but sometimes those are the storms that we, we experience. And speaking of storms, again, shout out to Anthony Morales, who will be attempting to bowl away, wrestle away, box away, strip away the welterweight championship from Sicario himself, the sniper, Julio Hernandez of the tribe, baby tribe. Julio has been in a long-term relationship with that belt and I don't think he's planning on letting it go. And that match will be happening later on Well, at this point, Dansbury, all he has to do is just close frames, close frames, and just keep it on the lane. Mike, understandably, you know, is lo losing win with every single shot. Just couldn't get himself in the right in the right rhythm, in the right flow of things. And Lyndon may be where his world, oh sorry, where his heavyweight title ring ends on this Saturday. And it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that he could not get the look that he was, that he was looking for. Never could get out the blocks. And a fast eight. He tries something a little bit just to see what, what could have been. And it turns out that even that, that is all for naught. Jonathan Nansbury, he's got to be feeling, feeling ecstatic, feeling elated right now. What looks to be an absolute and definite victory for him to, to attain his first ever singles title. And it looks like we are looking at what I believe is, it may be early to say, it may not be, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it. His very first heavyweight title. I'm proud to see it. I know his partner Troy is happy to see it. I know all of All In definitely have to be happy to see it. And 
and Dansbury up. And oh, he's human. <laughs> he leaves a seven pin. Got a little fast with his feet there, but who could blame him? He's feeling really good, and as he should. I would be feeling good myself. And no problem on that seven pin. Sean Hack, if you're watching, uh, if you got any thoughts about this, definitely feel free to comment. Right now, Dansbury's looking like he, he's not worried about anything or anybody. He's come here to bowl. He's, he's come here to take control. And he's taking over the situation. And only thing taking over, <laughs> only thing taking over Mike Patolsky is absolute just frustration. And right now, it's looking like Linden might be the least favorite place for, for Mike to bowl. This might be on the do not return list for Mike Potowski. And that right there, I believe that may be the nail in the coffin. And that right now will usher in the era of all in and the era of Sir Dingle, Jonathan Dansbury, JDD. And right now I am standing with his partner, his partner in crime, Mr. F him where they breathe, <laughs> Mr. Troy Gafkin. Hey, you've held tag team, you've held the tag team title with this guy right here. And I know you gotta be proud, especially you being a former singles champion yourself seeing your partner finally getting off the island, as we say, and getting himself his very own piece of hardware. How do you feel about that? It's a really good feeling. Um, to be on the island of relevancy yeah. um, is a good thing. Dansbury has been in the UVA for a long time. Um, he's been running the single circuit for a long time. And uh, I know that his antics aren't always well liked, but at the end of the day, he deserves this more than people really know. And for someone who's been bowling with him for almost a decade now, mm -hmm. to see him actually be the, the Northeast heavyweight champion, yeah. like it's it's a really uh, it's a really good feeling. He supported me through my career, so being able to return the favor and be here, and not to mention, um, this is a sweep. You know what? I was looking for the broom. I think I think Mike broke the broom before it could be used. You know, people like to talk and clown my guy sometimes, but uh, he brought the broom today. Mm -hmm. So talk about his carry. Call, call him the luckiest man on the planet, but you will refer to him as the Northeast champion. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, call me anything, but don't forget to call me by my name, and my name is champion. Absolutely. So respect it, because Dansbury's here for a bit now. A acknowledge him. UBA, acknowledge him. And there you have it. And I am standing right in here. Woo. Let's pick up this hardware, sir. What is this like? Uh, Troy, where's your. Oh. oh. I'm not used to this. I'm not, I'm not used to. Uh, I'm used to being on phones with somebody else with me. Uh, you know. Holy shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. I have no idea how long I've been on this list. I have no idea. Uh, UBA all day. We are here. Lyndon Lane's the voice of choice, Sean Knight facing, standing here with the new. Undisputed. UBA Northeast heavyweight champion, JDD himself, Sir Dingle, Jonathan Dingle Dansbury. And today you were all in. How do you feel? You finally got your first singles title. You grinded for this. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I don't understand the words that are coming out of your mouth. It hasn't hit me yet. I, I don't know what you're talking about. 
<laughs> so, so Dingle's in dreamland right now. Yeah. How long have you been on this list? Now, let's talk about this. Because, hey, you, you, I used to have to contact you to make matches. And you, you've done it all. You've been behind the scenes. You've held tag team titles with, with Troy. You know, and I know you've always wanted this for yourself. And you finally got this for yourself. How does it feel? How, what? Tell us what's happening. I'm trying to think how long it's been because... Jeez, you'd have to ask more. I, I'd have to go and dig into, like, the archives because it's – I just never – the competition is tough. I mean, say what say, – I mean, there's, there's a list of, like, eight right now, but, like, even years past. Like, look, look, at, look at all the people that have held this before me. Mm -hmm. I mean, competition is tough. It's been – I almost want to say 2017. I've had number one, you know, a handful of number one contenders matches. I had my first title match a few months ago. Got embarrassed, and, and just here we are. I just uh, it hasn't all like sunk in yet. So uh, let's talk about what you uh, what you were experiencing on the lane. So now I noticed that you had a, a a great strategy in mind. You went dull, you know, and you went strong, and you manipulated the outsides. And I noticed that. Your opponent, Mike, was was catching, you know, he catched a lot of bad breaks, but he went with predictable surfaces and everything. Did that did that mean, did that change anything that you were thinking about doing on a lane surface wise? Uh, in the beginning of practice, um, I, I kind of knew Lyndon fairly well. I pulled here enough. I pulled enough matches here, mm -hmm. singles matches. Okay. I asked the guys, you know, in the boat league here, you know, has has anything changed in Lyndon? Chow shot, and they're like, nope, same shot. I'm like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So. Last time I bowled here was went with, you know, surface here and just, you know, stuff that just, you know, doesn't, that just kind of just blends the middle of the lane out and just doesn't go crazy on the back end for this long, for this long pattern. And the outsides, I mean, in, I saw on the outsides, you know, like you touch the outsides, you know, it's, it's going to go. But, you know, with the surface that I had, you know, it's, it just kind of blended out. So it just kind of read early and then just sat on the back end. So, so the strategy was pretty much like, I had like a four ball, you know, you know, kind of like, you know, plan pretty much to go through the match, you know, like that ball started to fail. It's like, okay, bail, go to the next one. That one starts to go, bail, go to the next one. So uh, I first had a good idea after practice what to go to, so. I like how you said next one because the next one, Sean Hack swept Josh Valdez. He's watching this, you swept the champ. So right now we got you know, broom in a pole match. Or what, what do we got here? Um, is that so, huh? <laughs> well, I think I have some uh, unfinished business first. You know, I've got some business ahead in August. I'm not looking to show on hatch yet. Okay. And, and what business might that be? Uh, I think we have some uh, battle ball business, I believe. Oh, oh so, so, so you're you're battle ball ready? Uh, I unless uh, unless uh, unless the instructions are I'm told are differently. Uh. North champ versus South champ. I believe Nick Christie lost, so Nick Christie. Hey, I may treat, look, take it for what it's worth. I'm coming. Be ready. So I'm you're coming. you're bringing a date, and uh, she's 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 looking she's looking good with you. Don't look, she don't look too she don't look too bad. Uh, you don't mind if I touch her a little bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> Only you, buddy. Uh, look, see. And, and, and Troy, and Troy. Oh, there you go. There. And, and our camera guy, Tony. It ain't no fun if other bowlers can't have no stuff. Well, <laughs> Come on now. Uh, super proud of you. Um, I'm definitely glad to you know sit here and be here for this moment, and and I'll be there for the moment that I know you're definitely waiting for a chance to potentially become champion of the world. You know, North versus South. That's what it's about. Never easy. The world belt hasn't been up here in years. Um, game plan is bring it back up north where it belongs. That's it. We the north. We the north. That's it, man. We the north. We're gonna try and bring that belt back up here, and uh, we're gonna try like hell. Hey. They're tough competitors down there. Nick Christie, Withers. They're uh, two uh, tough, two tough customers, but we we gotta, we gotta do it. Gotta get it done. Hey. Gotta get it done. Get it done. That's it. Gotta get it done. Hey, man. I acknowledge you. Great job today, and looking forward to seeing you at Battle Bowl. Thank you, Sean. Oh, Thank you. Indeed. Hey, voice of choice here. UBA all day. New champion.